Hello, I am Aiden Burke, E. Berkey, and I'm going to tell you about DOOR. DOOR is the Deaf Opportunity Outreach. And this is a story about um, a trip with them. Three summers ago, I went to DOOR, the Deaf Opportunity Outreach, to a training camp in Evansonville, Indiana. And there were 13 different teenagers, and there were 13 different teams. And we do a lot of different things like music, performing, just hanging out. And some, there was a lot of hardcore practicing for about a week. And then we decided to go to Chicago to perform our show. So we're trying to figure out how we can do all this, but yet respect what's already there in Chicago. After Chicago, we went to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I love that place. I had so much fun there. We went shopping. We went shopping in the in a big place, but I don't, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal. After Minnesota, we traveled day and night to Vancouver, Canada. And that is a nice place. It's very interesting. And I actually got asked to do different things there. In fact, build a house, and I couldn't believe it. But, you know, I was patient, and I helped do whatever I can. And then this woman who were building the house for her had absolutely nothing, no food, n nothing at all. So that really helped me put things into perspective. And whenever I look back, I try not to forget that. That was an important, important lesson I learned. Next, we went to Seattle, Washington, and we played music, and then we were settling down, and I thought this four-week trip was almost over, and then it was getting time to sundown, and it was, or it was getting to be about the time where we need to be back at sundown, and they were very strict on the time, um, so we had to be back in a certain amount of time so they wouldn't worry about it. And we always went everywhere in a group, but this one time, a guy named Daniel, a little ego egotistical, he decided to leave our group earlier. And he just left our group. He just ran away. And we thought, eh, bye bye, see you later. And then when we arrived back to the hotel, one person asked us, Where's Daniel? And we all looked at each other, like, uh, Where is Daniel? And then panic started to set in, and everyone started to look. They had to ask the police where he might be, and the cops were searching where he was. And, you know, we were looking in the next town, and so many people were on the search for Daniel, but they couldn't find him. And they decided to... Maybe he just decided to show up late, and he'll show up a little later. But he was actually found on the ground, passed out. And he just made one turn early. 
one turn to it. And I feel like it was kind of inconsiderate of him not to stay with the group because everyone was worried. But that's that. And then we went to San Francisco. I am so lucky. Halfway through our trip, um, we got to San Francisco. And I was lucky because everyone was complaining that, you know, they miss their friends and family. But I was lucky enough because my parents' home is in San Francisco, so I was able to see them before we went to Bakersfield. And I already know Bakersfield. And I've, I have I used to be in a bikers group that would bike around that area. And they'd help with teenager needs and stuff like that. Next, we went to L.A., and we saw so many teenagers, and most of them were here, and there were some really nice-looking girls there, too. And that we were at Long Beach, and it's where a lot of famous things in Hollywood happen, but we didn't get to see any of that. We went swimming and a lot of beach stuff. And then we went to Colorado Springs, and that was a really nice place. Beautiful flat land on one side with um, the mountain on the other side. It was just gorgeous. And there were seven different waterfalls in this one area. And at sundown, we decided... At sundown, we saw that a storm started to blow in, and we're all looking at each other, us mischievous boys just looking at each other, and us daredevils decide, decided to suck it up and go open up the window, and we were getting pelted with rain, and this was painful, but it was still fun. So we got in a little bit of trouble, but... Oh well. Next we went to Amarillo, Texas. And it, this area is, the land is just so flat. And after we performed and everything, we decided that we wanted to hang out and it was dark outside and it was really interesting with the how the clouds were forming and we were driving and when we arrived to the hotel I was told that there was a tornado in the distance and to look to see the tornado and I saw the curvy tornado and I was shocked because there's no wind or nothing and I could not but feel wow um yeah, that could be a tornado, but I doubt it. So I got into bed and didn't really think much of it. And this place is a really nice area. And we went to the biggest theater in the area. And that is when the storm hit. There was lightning everywhere. And I was a little nervous. All the boys were a little nervous. Like, I don't know. What do we do? What do we do? We just couldn't believe how nervous we were. But we tried to keep our composure. And told ourselves not to be afraid. And just stay quiet. And after three long hours, we were able to relax. Because the tornado had left.
The next day we went to North Carolina and that's where the tour headquarters really are and we We were in contact with Eric, Eric, Erickson, the famous musician who used to um, stage dive during performances. And it was a very motivational because, you know, we realized that we, us staffs, can do anything, and that's what they really encouraged. And it was such a great experience. Um, and they were able to hang out for a little bit before we had to go home. After that, it was interesting. It was, it was very interesting because we got to meet so many different people and see so many different cultures.